it is interesting to take the point of view of all kinds of life forms on Earth, of viruses, of bacteria. They have a very different view. And, and you know, it's like the Instagram channel, um, Nature is Metal. Right. The ethic under which uh, nature operates doesn't often coincide, correlate with human morals. It seems cold and um, machine-like in the selection process that it performs. I am an analyst, I'm a scholar, an intellectual, and I feel I should carefully distinguish predicting what's likely to happen and then evaluating or judging what I think would be better to happen. And it's a little dangerous to mix those up too closely because then we can have wishful thinking. And so I try typically to just analyze what seems likely to happen regardless of whether I like it or whether we do anything about it. And then once you see a rough picture of what's likely to happen if we do nothing, then we can ask, well, what might we prefer? And ask, where could the levers be to, to move it at least a little toward what we might prefer? It's and kind that's of, a you know useful, but often doing that just analysis of what's likely to happen if we do nothing offends many people. <laughs> they find that you know dehumanizing or cold or metal, as you say, <laughs> uh, to just say, well, this is what's likely to happen. And you know it's not your favorite, sorry, but um, maybe we can do something, but maybe we can't do that much. This is very interesting that the, the cold analysis, whether it's geopolitics, whether it's medicine, whether it's economics, sometimes misses some very specific aspect of um, human condition. Like for example, when you look at a doctor and the act of a doctor helping a, a single patient if you do the analysis of that doctor's time and cost of the medicine or the surgery or the transportation of the patient, this is the Paul Farmer question. You know, is it worth spending 10, 20, $30,000 on this one patient? When you look at all the people that are suffering in the world, that money could be spent so much better. And yet, there's something about human nature that wants to help the person in front of you and that is actually the right thing to do, despite the analysis. And sometimes when you do the analysis, you um, there's something about the human mind that allows you to not take that leap, that irrational leap uh, to act in this way, that the analysis explains it away. Well, it's like, uh, for example, uh, the US government, you know, the DOT, Department of Transportation, puts a value of, I think, like $9 million on a human life. And the moment you put that number on a human life, you can start thinking, well, okay, I can start making decisions about this or that and with a sort of cold economic perspective. And then you might lose, you might deviate from a deeper truth of what it means to be human somehow. So you have to dance because uh, then, if you put too much weight on the anecdotal evidence on, on these kinds of human emotions, then you're going to lose, uh, you could also probably more likely deviate from truth. But there's something about that cold analysis. Like I've been listening to a lot of people coldly analyze wars, war in Yemen, war in Syria, uh, Israel, Palestine, war in Ukraine, and there's something lost when you do a cold analysis of why something happened. When you talk about energy, uh, uh, talking about sort of conflict, competition over resources. When you uh, talk about geopolitics, sort of models of geopolitics and why a certain war happened, you lose something about the suffering that happens. I don't know. It's an interesting thing because you're both, you're exceptionally good at uh, models in all domains, <laughs> literally. Um, but also there's a humanity to you. Uh, so it's an interesting dance. I don't know if you can comment on that dance. Sure. It's definitely true, as you say, that for many people, if you are accurate in your judgment of, say, for a medical patient, right, what's the chance that this treatment might help? And what's the cost? And compare those to each other. And you might say, this looks like a lot of cost for a small medical gain. And at that point, knowing that fact, that might take the wing, you know, the, the air out of your sails. <laughs> you might 
not be willing to do the thing that maybe you feel is right anyway, which is still to pay for it. Um, and then somebody knowing that might want to keep that news from you, not tell you about the low chance of success or the high cost in order to save you this tension, this, this awkward moment where you might fail to do what they and you think is right. But I think the higher calling, the, the, the higher standard to hold you to, which many people can be held to, is to say, I will look at things accurately, I will know the truth, and then I will also do the right thing with it. I will be at peace with my judgment about what the right thing is in terms of the truth. I don't need to be lied to in order to figure out what the right thing to do is. And I think if you do think you need to be lied to in order to figure out what the right thing to do is, you're at a great disadvantage because then people will be lying to, you will be lying to yourself, and you won't be as effective yes. at achieving whatever good you are trying to achieve. But getting the data, getting the facts is step one, not yes. the final step. Absolutely. So it's, a, I would say, having a good model, getting the good data is step one, and it's a burden. Because you can't just use that data to um, arrive at sort of the easy, convenient thing. You have to really deeply think about what is the right thing. You can't use the, so the, the, the dark aspect of data, uh, of models, is you can use it to excuse away actions that are unethical. You can use data to basically excuse away anything. But not looking at data, let you it's excuse worse. yourself to pretend and think that you're exactly. doing good when you're not. Exactly. Uh, but it is, a, it is a burden. It doesn't excuse you from still being human and deeply thinking about what is right. That very kind of gray area, that very subjective area. Um, that's part of the human condition. 